I think it's so important to round out your entire team and educate them on, here's the right moves to make, here's how you are a leader, this is what you can do. In these situations, when they happen, what do we learn? And they're gonna fail a lot, I fail a lot, but we learn from it. And then the next time, they're gonna be better leaders. Welcome to Real Creative Leadership, a place where creative leaders can find insights and practical guidance on the day-to-day -day job of being a creative leader. We focus on real issues, topics, and insights of creativity in the business world. Join me as we explore the best strategies for developing your team, getting others to embrace your vision, and generating amazing experiences. This series is produced by The Stoke Group, and I'm your host, Adam Morgan, Adobe Executive Creative Director and author of Sorry Spock, Emotions Drive Business. And this is Real Creative Leadership. All right, hello, hello. We are here again on the show floor at uh, Max 2022. So excited to be with you. We have a wonderful topic that we're about to dig into here. And I first let me introduce our guest and then we'll get into the topic. Okay. So this is Bridget Esposito. She is the VP of Creative at uh, Prudential. That's right. Before we get a little further, tell us a little bit about you, your background, and so that people can get to know you a little bit more. Right, so yes. Vice President of Creative at Prudential, and I'm also a mother to two amazing children and play a lot of softball. I'm also a professor teaching design to non-designers, mm. kind of helping everybody understand the importance of design and what it plays into the culture and to their business and things like that. And uh, yeah, that wraps it up. Excellent. And I like to have a good time. That's the okay. Thing, so. And we're going to get back in because I have a question for you on the baseball thing. That's oh, great. Lead us into a, another part of the story. Sports. But um, so the topic for today is we're going to talk about how do you build a team today mm. for the future, for tomorrow? Because there's a lot of talk of how technology and diseases and things have just shaken our world. Right. And now we're really looking at like, what do we do? How do we help that team? What's the culture? What are the rules? What are the things that we do to help our creative get better and better and better? And so there's a lot behind all that that we want to dig into. Absolutely. That's, there is a lot to that. Yes. <laughs> well, let's start. How long with, do we have? We, uh, let's see, the clock says 23 minutes. So. Oh, perfect. Just enough time. <laughs> Just enough. All right, well, let's start first to like talk about how your team functions now, how things have changed. What are some of the new ways that you're learning to bring creativity into your work? Yeah, absolutely. So the team was all over the country originally pre COVID, but the majority of us were together in our home base in Newark, New Jersey. And during COVID, we had to switch all that, right? Everybody was home. So it actually helped us out because it became an equal playing field for everyone. Um, and then from that point, we really had to figure out how are we brainstorming together? Like, how are we using the digital resources we have, putting even more effort into connecting with one another and making sure that we're all on the same page or that we're talking about fun things and creative things outside of just our work and really developing a more digital space of how we live. And now that we're back from that and we're in this hybrid mode, there's still people all over the country, um, which is lovely because I feel like that we come and get together when we need to, and that's okay. I think a lot of people are like, we're back, now we've all gotta be back together, but that's not the case because we've learned to operate so well together. Prudential is extremely productive <laughs> during COVID. And so I think that's a really good sign that we can work in the way that people like to work help them balance their life and their culture and still up the level of creativity. And I think being home even and being outside places or traveling to another country and staying there where they work has really helped up the level of creativity that comes in the shop. Yeah, that's true because they get new fodder, they get new yeah. experiences, all that kind of stuff. It's funny you said we got, we did, we got really productive Yes. when we're all locked into our creative caves, right? Like really productive. <laughs> in, yeah. And now I feel like there's just this, uh, this, inefficiency that we're trying to put back in the system, right? Like, Absolutely. we don't have to be a productive 100% of the time. Like, how do you build culture? How do you create moments that people come together? How do you make yeah. it so that there is, because you have new people, I'm sure, right? Oh, that absolutely. started since, yeah. since this all began. So yeah. what are you doing with them? So what's interesting is that people are trying to force it in and they'll say, well, I can't go into the office. I can't, I'm going to lose so much time mm. because I'm going to lose time commuting and I'm going to lose time this. And what I try to explain is that what you're, what you're gaining is you're gaining the connectivity of being in person with someone and the laughs that are going to happen or the, the random conversations that are going to occur or exploring together. And so that it's okay that you're not constantly making things from the moment you wake up to the way you go because that other stuff's so important. And then for the new people, it's great because we're finally getting together. I don't know about you, but seeing someone in, in a <laughs> box to then seeing someone in real person, sometimes you do a double take like, 
Oh, How wow. tall are you? I, I, <laughs> I know, that's always things like, yeah. you're shorter than I thought. It's like, yes, great. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> no, I said that to me. Not <laughs> no, to me. <laughs> but when, it's kind of like taking someone holistically. It, it takes a little second there, but it's good. We're, we're getting people in. We're pulling people together. We're doing full team sessions where we're flying everyone in and, mm. and really taking that time to spend together because it's more important than ever. And we don't have to be together all the time, but there are those key moments where you get a couple days together, you spend that time, and it's making a world of difference. Mm. Well, tell me more about culture. Tell me how you're building those unwritten rules in this new hybrid world. Yeah, there's a, I will say that there are many people that have their own ideas of what it should look like. Mm -hmm. And I work in a financial company, right? So there is a lot of jobs in that sector that need to be in person for yeah. legal reasons and what have you. Um, so there's a harder push of we don't need to be in person. We just need these moments. And someone has to be the voice of that. So being a champion for your team and saying, this is what's best for my team. And then having the conversations because everybody's different. Some people are like, I'm coming in every day because I just miss being there. I can't take my dog anymore or what have you, right? Um, so I think <laughs> listening to your team, understanding what their needs are, and then finding that right balance and being the champion for what it is is so important uh, all the way up the chain because people will make assumptions of what is necessary based on another person's role. And that's never going to benefit anybody. Mm. I remember you talking about how you had a new person, you had to teach them about networking because the world yes. of networking has totally changed. Let's hear about yeah. that. Yeah, so it was interesting because going through, what do you need from me? How can I help you? And the person said, you know, I don't know how to network. I said, network? You mean like talk and hang out? And <laughs> I said, yeah, but if I don't know someone, what do I do? I've mm. never been taught about, I'm going to this um, internal work function mm. and there's going to be senior level people that I'm really interested in talking to. I'm so nervous about how I approach them. What do I say? And it was so it was such an interesting conversation where I said, listen, you've got to do your own research. Find the people that you want to meet. Know a little bit about them, right? I was so excited to meet Adam. Like, I nerded out the first time I met him, by the way, <laughs> at a conference. It was Aww. a little embarrassing. I think it bounced back since then. But I had already done my research of questions of knowing what I want to talk to Adam about. So it was good to have that conversation with the person so they understood. Do your research. Figure out what questions you have. Have them ready. And then have some, and have an elevator speech, speech ready for yourself. It was interesting because it took me back that they were younger and just said, yeah. "I don't know how to." This is all them. new to a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely, because totally they finished college during COVID, mm -hmm. and now they're in the working world, and it's all new to them. Well, another thing I want to talk about is just like now that we're, there's a lot of people that in, on teams that are spread out all over, and it really has changed the dynamic of both hiring and growing and finding yeah. the people and talent, and it's like. Now the talent pool is everywhere, right? Absolutely. How is that affecting your creative team or affecting, like, even when you said mentioning people going to another country, yeah. that's giving them good skills and lessons that will come back and make them more valuable as, a, as an employee too. So there's just such a new mix with all of that. It, it is a new mix, and I love it. I think the idea that the person needs to work an hour away from where you are really did hold back from things. So opening up and being able to find, I mean, diversity is so important in your team. So getting someone that has experience and that lives in a different area is, is just, it's making the team better. And so we've been able to hire a lot of talent all over the country in different spaces that have different backgrounds or, you know, oh, they're, you know, they're a Southern California grind. Awesome. Great. Bring us some of those experiences. So everything from location to, to gender and to preferences and things like that, all of that diversity really plays a part in building a better team. And it's exciting, it's, it's really cool. Does it make it more competitive for oh, everyone? Oh yeah, sure does. that could be scary for a lot of people, but yeah, yeah I think it's not, you're no longer competing for just one or two roles, it's now all of the roles, so there's more opportunity everywhere. Absolutely, right? and I think that's what's exciting because you'll find the right place for you because it might not be that our company is the right place for someone and, and vice versa. You're gonna find the right one because you've got all these options now. And the, I think having the level of competitiveness is so important to you as in your career and knowing what that is because you figure out how hard do I want to fight? Like, what do I need to do to get better? Like, it is a learning process as you go through that. And so I think it's, it's a good thing to have that competition. And I think as creatives, sometimes we shy away from like competition or it's the other way where they're like, you know, I'm working with someone and it's either their idea or mine. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's healthy but when your person next to you comes up with this genius idea and it's amazing and it's going to benefit the outcome, you should be celebrating that person and saying, like, high five. Like, that is so good. You know, I'm so glad yours won. And then go back and figure out how to make yourself better or work on that next idea that might be the winner. Oh, that's awesome.
All right, so as we're talking more about building this team right now, for the, mm -hmm. of, of now for the future, so let's talk a little bit more beyond just the interpersonal skills and, and how they're learning, but what is, how is the work changing? What uh, are you doing yeah. differently now than you were a few years ago? Or where do you think, see things moving in, in, in a new direction? Yeah, absolutely. So several years ago, I would describe us as really scrappy, mm -hmm. like doing what we could to get things done with little resources. And we kind of had, because the, the volume of projects wasn't as large, we could do that. Then COVID hit, everything changed from a lot of that print of those larger campaigns to like fast, fast hitting pieces, right? Whether it was social and digital, whatever. And so the volume increased tremendously. And um, I think we had to figure out what that would look like. And the volume increased, our team increased, and it became this different dynamic for us that we're still working through and we're learning to work through that. But we had to figure out, okay, so how are we gonna improve our processes so that they're doing less of that grunt work or less of the admin work that they don't want to do and then they get faster and have more time for like creation and evolution. Like how are we prioritizing? How are we going through stuff? So the whole process improvement has been a journey that we're still on, but that makes a huge difference in how we're all working. And the team also becomes really important that factor because they're also improving the process, right? So I need them to say, hey, this isn't working, but I have an idea of how to work. It's going to work better. Can we try it? And so getting the team involved and improving that whole thing is like massively made us better mm. in that past year. And that, I think, becoming a better creative that way as well, right? We can't just do the work. We've got to holistically look at like data and all these other items and the way that we create our process and improving it all together to make you a more holistic creative. Mm. And that's a big role of being a creative leader is yeah. you're not just guiding like the new creative work, but it's the whole system. It's the whole yeah. machine. It's how you build it all together and how you're going to find those efficiencies so you can focus on the right things rather than yeah. always worrying about all the little it's, things. It's so funny because it's like if you if you look at an outside person and they're like, what do you do? And then you kind of describe it, you realize that you absolutely did not describe <laughs> everything that you do in a day as a yeah. creative leader, right? There's the, you know, there's balancing budgets and headcounts and talking about operations, like operations that, yeah. and um, what's the value that we're getting back? Like, you know, all, all of those things. And then managing people because every person is different. And so it is, it's definitely, when you look at everything we do, it's like, man, we are so badass, aren't we? <laughs> like, I know, like, high five. We're so cool. I love it. Okay, so let's go back a little bit to this. You mentioned content velocity, yeah. where there's just so much more content, so many channels and things that you have to do. A big thing that we're wrestling with right now is democratization of creativity. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you're dealing with the same thing where it's like, okay, we can't possibly, you, your team grew. Yes. And, so but that's not exponential. It. You can't right. still support all that, and you can't just keep adding and adding more people to fix the problem. Yeah. So how are we creating systems or ways of self-service or you know, yeah. ways that marketers and others can help contribute to the creativity and have like creativity for all in a, in a bigger way? So that becomes a really big part of all of it. Because even, um, and I teach this in my Design for Non-Designers course to business students, public relations, data scientists, is that how can they embrace the brand, understand the brand, pull it through, what could they do, not do, how do they speak the language? But then from a process standpoint, we absolutely can't take on all of it, right? So we've created libraries, a Creative Cloud library, which has been, that's a lifesaver. We create all these libraries, we bring them into XD, we also utilize them in Adobe Express, and then we teach some of our strategists or, or social media to use Express properly mm -hmm. so that our brand cohesion stays through there. And man, that is a big uplift off of your team when they don't have to make another email header or another banner. Oh my gosh, Bob in accounting really needs this for a sales meeting. Can you make it right this moment? Um, when we, we started using the tools, it was a big uplift off the team. And that, that helped with morale too. Because they're like, yes, I do not have to do that banner. That is amazing. Someone else is going to do it. So that's been great. And then even like creation, content creation, having the library set up, whether it's our email headers or our social or, you know, being able to just grab that, pop it in and start ideating and not having to worry about, you know, the, the stuff around it in order for approval is, has been wonderful. It is true. Like the technology is keeping up with us and helping us with a lot of yeah. that. Like oh, even when you talk about Adobe Express, that's like a year or two yeah. ago, no one would even know about it. It didn't exist back then. Wait. But now ways to lock down your brand so yeah. that people can have templates and things without monkeying with the brand. That's a huge game changer. I just need everybody to know that I was a Spark adopter <laughs> from the start. And I love Spark. So, um, yeah. Um, noted. That's so noted. 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 In, 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 I'm an OG. I'm an OG <laughs> Spark person. 
Um, yeah, but it's a big, it has made a huge difference. And then also it makes a huge difference for those who are going into marketing, like the students that are so excited about business marketing and, and, and data analytics and um, things like that, ha giving them the tools and educating them in that space and getting them excited to use Express and then make things to help bring their messages out and mm -hmm. cut through. And that is such an amazing learning for them that I, students always come back and said, I made a difference because I was able to communicate my message in the right way and I use these tools to help me get there. Like that's, that's democratization right there. It's amazing. So. No, that is true. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up students and education because I want to come back now to, okay. uh, to your story about uh, softball or baseball. Uh, and yeah. uh, so let me set a little stage here. So okay. normally, you know, a, a part of this is, is not just building the team, it's building yourself, building your own career, Absolutely. right? Yep. And so as, as creative leaders, you've got to really find the right path to help you learn the right skills so that you can get up to that next level. And most of us think that, oh, I just jump in and I just go through the same path. Like I start out yeah. as a designer and then I go to senior designer and then I'm an ACD and a creative director and so on and so forth. Yeah. But tell us about your journey because I think it's fascinating and I think there's a gem to learn from it as far as like how you get to that higher strategic level. I love that you're calling it a gem because I think in the moment, yeah. People were like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Are you just, are you throwing advertising out the window, right? Like yeah. it was one of those things. But, um, you know, come 2008, as a lot of us working in the agency space knew, the first thing when when it hit was cuts. Cuts. And so they're like, we don't know, you know, those design people, right? I love that there's much more appreciation for what we do now than, than back then. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so in 2008, I decided I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get my master's in fine arts, going to work for that space. And I had played college softball, played at Seton Hall University, woo woo, go Pirates, <laughs> and uh, played college ball there. And so I went back to coach. And so the opportunity to coach in a Division One space is a lot of pressure. Mm. But in that, I learned so much about accountability, team dynamics, culture, how to work through adversity, wins and losses, and all of those really intense leadership skills that really shaped who I was. Like understanding that I truly believed that I'm only gonna be as uh, successful as the person to the right or left of me, so I better improve them and bring them along with me, was one of the factors that really, like, that pushed me forward in my career. So after coaching Division One softball for five years, finishing my, my terminal degree, and economy's getting back, I went right back into working, and those skills just helped me jump, 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 jump. It was. They were propelling me forward because I had all of this in the space. So it was totally a different space to go into. Mm -hmm. But I think those experiences are really valuable. And I appreciate them now more than ever because I truly believe who I am, what I believe in. The leadership skills was all from, you know, it started as, a, as an athlete at a young age, but then really as a coach, just really formulated and curated into who I want to be. So, no, I love yeah. it. I think that's, fan that's fantastic because... Yeah, so often people think that it's just a linear cycle. Right. But learning yeah. and leadership is so different than the craft of creative, like where we're working on all the crafts. Yeah. So getting those skills of understanding how to deal with people and how to manage and how to inspire yeah. and how to get them going, so critical. So critical. So critical. I used to think that it just magically happened. Like someone was just that leader or that person. And we always say like, be a leader, right? But what we forget is that they need to learn how to be a leader. You need to learn and have those experiences and be taught what's the right thing to do, what's the right move to make here. And that happens a lot at work, right? So I love my creative team and I'm super proud of them because at any point, if I'm not in that room, they will absolutely step into that room for me and be the voice. I'm very proud of them and they've learned over the years that if they go into a room and I am not there and there's a situation where they feel like they're not getting the right information or they need to defend some work or they need to explain some work, they have they have the chops to, and, the, and the empowerment to say, okay, this is not right. This is how I feel. They know how to stand up. They know how to voice who we are as creatives. And I'm so proud of them for that. And I, I honestly do not fear when someone's like, oh, you're going on vacation. Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, going on vacation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and the team will be there and they're going to be amazing. And if they need me, they will let me know. But I think it's so important to round out your entire team and educate them on here's the right moves to make. Here's how you are a leader. This is what you can do. In these situations, when they happen, what do we learn? And they're going to fail a lot. I fail a lot, but we learn from it. And then the next time, they're going to be better leaders. And like everybody on my team, I'm, some of them are sitting out there. I know that they're going to be amazing creative leaders as they, as they grow up. Well, there we have it. That's, that yeah. was such a good ending. We like brought yeah. it full circle. It's like if you want right. to have a, a creative team for the future, 
you start now first by investing in your team and Absolutely. understanding what they are, helping them learn. And then we get into technology and we get into new trends and ways that we're building content and how we're democratizing around the world. And then it comes right back to, and you got to build yourself and you got to build your career and make sure you're right there so that you can there for lead your team. So I love that. Perfect story. This was such a great conversation. I mean, <laughs> I could talk all day about this. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so great. much for being with us. This was awesome. So hopefully yeah. everyone else out there got a little bit out of it and they can use that for their own team as they're, as they're helping them grow. Now I want to talk about like, how can people learn more about you? How can they follow you? Oh, where, do, yeah. where, where, do we, where do we follow Bridget? So you can follow me on LinkedIn. And I would love to tell you that I am super good at social and like taking the time and putting everything up there. I'm not. But follow me. But I do answer my LinkedIn's on the regular. So please find me on there. Message me. I love talking about leadership. And no matter where you are, who you are, what level you are, it doesn't matter. I love talking about it. So come find me. Well, awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Well, thank you for being here. This, is, uh, this has been a wonderful conversation. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Real Creative Leadership. I'm your host, Adam Morgan. This series is produced by The Stoke Group, a full-service digital marketing agency that specializes in content marketing, video, and interactive experiences. If you're looking for a partner to build a strategy and content that delivers, visit thestokegroup.com and connect today.